Hello, my name is Jeff. This is 2A Self-Defense Law. What we do is we help people understand the law of self-defense in the simplest terms possible. We take the fear out of getting it wrong. Um, we're going to be uh, taking up a little bit of a notch. We're going to be talking with a lawyer out of New York. His name is Lazaria Angeles Lanza. And uh, he has a good perspective on life. And you don't become a good mariner in calm seas. And his life hasn't been a calm sea. And his experience is something that um, you need to take a closer look at, at it, especially if you are the type of person who is looking to get into a use of force event, who is offended easily, and you want to do a beatdown on, on somebody, okay? Um, this is his book right here. And we're going to be talking with him, MMA Law. Legal self defense and DA blues. And whomever of you guys buys the book and is the first one to put in a review of the book, I will send you one of these hats. Some others I will send a very small gift. So without further ado, Lazaria Angeles Lanza. I am with a, uh, a guy that I first talked with about, uh, talked to about four months ago, and I'd like to introduce him right now. How's it going? Hi, uh, and how are you? And hi, guys out there. My name is Lazaro Angeles Lanza. I'm known as the MMA lawyer. Yeah, I, I found it really interesting. I uh, first uh, uh, made contact with you uh, December or November, sometime about that, and you were, you were talking about a book with a different slant on self-defense law that isn't really prevalent. And I've, I've talked to lawyers about this topic and this topic literally puts other lawyers, kids through college. And this is yep. MMA fighters getting into trouble. Why the book and why does MMA fighters get into trouble so easily? Yeah, um, let's handle that. However, uh, just let me give a little background, please, because uh, I think if people understand how this all came to be, they'll understand uh, the book better and all the context of it better. So uh, rough childhood, um, many of us have had. Uh, my childhood led to me being extremely violent, drunk, drugged, a lot of trouble. Um, so I was on the other side of the law. Uh, so it was a story of redemption. Um, that all led to me as well, becoming very physically ill. I have autoimmune disorder. To this day, I still fight. So every day I have to wake up and fight for life. And I've been doing this since I'm about 20 years old. So it's a long time, too long. <laughs> and um, I was able to reclaim my health through holistic means. So I left what's called allopathic medicine, which means uh, generally what you guys would see as your regular doctors and nurses and such. I uh, set off and created a mission called The Course in Life. So I did get a law degree, became a lawyer, and about 50% of my time was spent lawyering and 50% of my time was spent helping people through my own journey. In part of that journey of healing, I started to study something called Tai Chi. Uh, it's a very uh, generally innocuous uh, way to move the body, to bring energy and, and flow and just good things to the healing the body. So uh, eventually it led me to get to, let's call it uh, uh, higher levels of martial arts. Uh, I eventually met a special forces guy who is one of the leading special forces trainers in the world. And for 12 years, I've been studying with him to improve my health. However, um, most people watching your channel, and um, <clears throat> I think most people in general, uh, we believe in the basic inalienable right to self-defense. And if we think about it, Bugs have a way to defend themselves generally, almost always. Um, grass, trees, animals, um, there's almost, even on a microscopic level, everything has a right to self-defense. Um, so about a year ago, it occurred to me that uh, there was a huge hole. Um, there was a lot of books about Second Amendment self-defense, which this book I wrote called MMA Law, 
Uh, it does deal with, however, um, let's call it a fad, uh, and it may pass and may not. Uh, it's a new thing. Uh, years ago, it was yoga. Now it's this thing. I'm studying MMA, and all these guys are doing the MMA thing. And if we speak the truth, and I like speaking the truth, um, I think 99% of them are good people. However, uh, when we have a red Ferrari in the garage, we want to take it out and play with it. So in the back of most people's minds who are training, there is a little bit of, you know, let somebody mess with me and I can show off my toys. And um, yeah, okay. So in 99% of dojos and other places people are training, they're not really being taught as much about the law, the ramifications, the consequences of engaging in violence as they are about doing let's call it uh, justified violence if necessary and i think that that is an epic mistake because we're going to repeat this a few times during this uh, this interview uh and i want to make sure that this is the one thing that hits home more than anything else if one gets violent in the new milieu big word in the context of the world the new world it is one is highly likely to be arrested, charged, and prosecuted. Now, here comes the big follow-up. It doesn't matter whether you are right or wrong. The judicial system has become hostile to the victim. It is a fact. So people will cite laws, statutes, common law. For people, those of you know some of the law, uh, we can get into that maybe. Uh, so basically the law, we'll call it the law says, yes, you can defend yourself. However, the reality is that if you do defend yourself, you are highly likely, very highly likely, to be arrested, charged, and prosecuted. And we all heard about the story in Texas where somebody pulled out a gun for rightful reasons and the sheriff shake his, shook his hand and somebody in Florida you know, crashed somebody in the head because he was robbing a store or something. Folks, that is the anomaly, the anomalies. This is not generally the case. If you get violent, you're going to be arrested, charged, and prosecuted, which leads to another thing that Jeff and I are going to get into, uh, the gray zone. Okay, so here's how it rolls. <laughs> Let's say a guy is in your face, and he's saying, ba bing ba bong ba bong whatever. Okay. And you don't preemptively strike. Is it possible that he may suddenly cold cock you push you, whatever, and you may land on the back of your head. And by the way, if anybody knows self-defense uh, on the physical level, the back of the head, generally, if we hit it on concrete or even grass, if you think grass is soft, by the way, you have not hit grass in a long time, okay? As kids, yay, you know, now us guys who are 40, 50, 60, whatever, okay? When we hit grass, trust me, try it if you want to, you know, have good luck in any of the other. Right? Okay, so um, if we hit the back of our head, we are – there's a decent chance you're going to wind up in a coma. Uh, you could become a paraplegic, quadriplegic, dead. Uh, it's not a joke. So then I should hit. No, because if you do, then you're going to highly likely be arrested, charged, and prosecuted with a lot of bad things that come along with that. A big word, concomitant, concurrent, concordant. What does it all mean? Joins, right? So what's going to happen is that you're going to face a long trial. Who's paying for that? If you're going to use a public defender, you're toast. Uh, the public defender, who do they work for? They work for the government. Who do the police work for? The government. Who do the judges work for? The government. Who does the prosecutor work for? The government. Who pays them? The government. They're all on the same team. A, 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 a prosecutor who is appointed to you is highly likely going to eventually give you a deal given by the prosecutor, and that's where you're going to a deal, which means you're highly likely to spend time in prison. Yeah. Now, that's not fair. Please, please, yeah, yeah. And and that's what um, this this book is. It's not um, a case heavily case written. It's not uh, the black louder of the law. It is an experienced guy telling his story of what the 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 machine is, the cog of what the legal system is. Good word, machine. And yeah. This is something that uh, you would want a an uncle to tell. Uh, we talked a little bit about this. You know, you go into these dojos and they they you they show you these one two three moves where you have somebody in, in on the ground in one two three moves, and those dojos need to have that just to keep people interested in getting to it. 
And then in my world, it's the, the guys who have all these little jewelries and trinkets on, on the guns. Do you want to get into a use of force event with these jewelry, uh, jewelries and, and trinkets? Mens Rea, Actor Reyes, can you talk yeah. a little bit about wanting to be, get into a self-defense event and, and having that machine just eat you up called the legal machine? Absolutely. So uh, your followers in general are people who are uh, uh, legally armed and rightfully so. I'd like to, by the way, just for a moment, read the Second Amendment. And yes, folks, I'm reading from these favorites. So if you think I have all the amendments memorized, I don't after all these years. Okay, so I just have to read them. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, comma, clauses mean something. The right of the people to keep and bear arms, comma, shall not be infringed. Okay. Now, why we are arguing about this at all in society is because the machine has torn away at our clarity on this. This is one of the most clearly stated amendments and these clauses in the Constitution. I'll say it again. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. You, this is, you know why we say in school, guys, remember, remember Dick and Jane went up the hill to fetch a pail of water? You would hold that sentence because it's a declarative sentence that is exceptionally clear. This is exceptionally clear. Okay, so bad guy comes around. Let's talk, let's talk about guns. Why not? We'll move it to there. Whether it's fighting with hands or gun or knife, it's, it's all the same thing. Um, the guy is threatening your life. Should you pull? Well, here's, here's what's going to happen. Any, guys, if I understand the expression, I will explain in a second. Any bullet fired downrange, which means, in, in the real world, means at a person or if you miss a person, it's flying down a block, maybe hitting somebody else or something else has a lawyer's name on it. So, uh, right, mens rea. When you commit violence, you have done something illegal. You're not allowed to be violent. Now, let's explain how that works. When the police arrive, you have done something illegal. You are not allowed to defend yourself. Now, you got all the lawyers out there going to say, wait a minute, you were justified. No, you were not. Let's say, for instance, let me try to clarify. That's a little tricky. It's a very, very, very gray area, okay? So let's say I take a gun, and I don't know that there is a guy right behind me pointing a gun at me about to shoot me. Let's say I point the gun. I just went nutty, okay, whatever. Uh, I go post office. No offense to, no offense to post office guys, okay? And pop. Now, hear what I said. I don't know that he's pointing a gun and is about to shoot me. I don't know that. And well, Jeff, this is a good question for you. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not putting you on the spot. This ask you. You tell me what happens here. Pop. I just shoot a gun because I want to shoot a gun. I don't know if the guy's about to shoot me. What happens here? Well, if he hits someone, it's going to be criminal uh, negligent homicide in some in some fashion. And my point, uh, my point has always been with this: people get confused about the doctrine of transference. If you did something with with that is not reasonable, you're going to be culpable. But if you did do something reasonable by shooting some at somebody, it pushes through somebody and it hits somebody. Uh, let's, let's just say it's a six-year-old child. There's something called the do doctrine of transference, where right. the criminal culpability goes from from not from your finger, but it's going to go on to the person who is attacking you, and they're going to get charged with a felony murder charge. That's and right. people really under need to understand that that people will say that every bullet shot has a lawyer attached, but you've got to understand that the doctrine of transference and what it does, but it doesn't necessarily give you immunity for a civil lawsuit. That is correct. Um, all right. Well, you know, what we're heading into here is, I mentioned before, a gray zone. Okay. So um, let me please pose it up. So, we have a situation in whether we're going to use hands, feet, elbows, knife, gun, whatever. If we don't act, in a sense, we could be damned, and damned if we do. 
Um, now, we're all thinking, hopefully at this point, there's, that sounds unfair. That's correct. The machine has made it where we can no longer do what a reasonable person should do. And I'll make that clear. Whatever other YouTube guys are telling you, whatever you've read, whatever you've heard, I'm telling you as an experienced attorney in this matter, and a specialist, actually, this is my specialty. Anytime you get violent, you have a 99% chance, whether you're right or wrong, just or not, cameras backing you up or not, witnesses or not. And if you're not arrested on the spot, by the way, you know any stories I mentioned earlier about in Texas, there was a guy who shot somebody, and the guy, the sheriff shook his hand. They don't follow up that a month later, the police return after the prosecutor says, go arrest him. Because the prosecutor's job is to get prosecutions. Their job is to build up their business. Their business is prosecution. They want to prosecute you. The government does not like you. The government, if you think the government likes you, Jeff has been reading my book and he's gotten this point yet. Just for instance, people out there, okay, don't pay your water bill. Watch what happens. Recently, a neighbor did not pay his water bill inadvertently and shut the water off. And we got into a philosophical conversation. And he said, you know, as a lawyer, what do you think about that? Is there a lawsuit, lawsuit and whatever, da, da, da. And I said, yeah, first of all, good luck filing a lawsuit against the government. This is administrative law and yeah, good luck with that nonsense. It can be done, it's done all the time. However, it's extremely difficult. The government has unlimited resources. Um, a solo lawyer like myself, or even a, lawyer, a, a law firm with a thousand lawyers, it doesn't match the weight of the government. Okay, so in this gray zone, um, I'm sorry, water, I'm sorry with that, yeah, okay, my ADD. So uh, we shut off the water. The government is going to shut off the water. Now, what if you live in a secluded area? What if you were crippled? What if a lot of things, there's a whole litany of lists of things of why it could be, everyone's gonna say, yeah, you can just go to your neighbor and get water, I'm not trying to kill you. No, there are reasons maybe why you would not be able to get to water, which means these people tried to kill you. If we did something similar, we'd be in prison. So if you think the government's your friend, just think about the one example I just gave, gave and Jeff and I can sit here and I can list off reasons, like a litany of, of reasons and other hypotheticals for hours. And I will continue to pound it. You eventually will say, you will agree with me. You'll say, yeah, the government's not my friend. Mm -hmm. All right, so the gray zone, let's just close it in, let Jeff run again. Okay, so there is a point in any conflict which you, me, Jeff, we don't cause conflicts, right? We're good guys. We don't do this. Okay, so in a conflict, which we didn't do, we're not responsible for, however, there's going to come a point in time that there's a moment of truth. Should I take action, whether it's with physicality, knife, gun, whatever, and if I don't, I am endangering my life, and if I do, I'm highly likely to face a very serious problem, by the way, being charged. I don't know that you guys out there, I don't want to face a couple of years of having prison hanging over my head, possibly. Just being prosecuted it doesn't mean you're going to be necessarily convicted. However, there's a possibility, right? Do you want to live with that? Uh, financially, do you understand if you do do the right thing, which is to get a qualified attorney as myself, I'm going to take everything you own happily. I'm sorry, guys. That's the truth, okay? I'm not, I'm just, I mean, you want me to tell you otherwise? I'm okay. I'm not the lawyer who's going to lie to you. I'm going to take everything possible, which means you're likely, unless you're very rich, you're likely to lose your life savings, your home, your job is probably done. Um, I, you know, guys, we're all guys. Most of us are men, not all. Okay. Uh, most women don't find it funny when you find, tell them, uh, I don't have a house anymore. I, guys, again, I'm sorry for telling the truth. The truth tellers usually get their asses kicked. Okay. However, tell your wife, the car, the house, the life savings, everything's gone. Most of us, we're not going to have our wives and girlfriends. And, stuff, and this okay? is, so that's just the way it is. And this is a big thing with the book. Um, you talk a lot about avoidance. I mean, you go yeah. into it like you wouldn't believe. Where, and, and this is what with the I would assume uh, with the MAA fighters, there's going to be somebody in that dojo who. Who, whose mentality is, I want to show you what I got. If, oh, so, yeah. if someone touches my hat, I'm going to make sure they never touch my hat again. Hey, don't touch this. 
<laughs> I think yeah. that's what the, the biggest part of the book, um, the, the first third of the book is, is avoidance and shut up. Yeah, let's see what the first one and the second one. Okay, so avoidance, guys. Um, most violence, not all, most. It's two egos <laughs> meeting. So let's think of it this way, okay? Um, whether Whatever your spiritual beliefs are, I don't care, meaning that in a good way. Good for you. I'm happy. If you have no, no, no spiritual beliefs, it's fine. I don't care. Uh, so in Zen or Buddhism, we think of two things hitting. So two egos. Now, if one ego is not here, what happens is nothing happens, right? It doesn't clap. So usually, not always, when someone's calling us names, a mother, a father, blah, 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 blah. Does this guy know your mommy, your daddy, or anything else? No. So why are you taking it personally? Uh, obviously, he's not right mentally in that moment or in his life in general. Uh, obviously, he's having a bad day. Uh, some guy, you, you make, we all make mistakes driving. We all, everybody's watching probably at one point had a car accident. Maybe you caused one. Um, people get their cars and they want to fight and all this kind of stuff. Um, okay. So why are you taking this personally, especially in dojos? There should be a big sign, big sign, big sign. We try to avoid violence at almost all costs. The only time to get violent is if your life is in imminent danger. I am agreeing I, with people who would say that there's a gray zone. Um, however, I'm going to say that preparation for the gray zone, which is now where the second part of that, if we run, for instance, movies in our mind, use techniques such as, and I speak about in the book, NLP stands for neuro linguistic programming. It really works. So you can practice things in your mind, such as having a high level conflict. If you do that, you'll be better prepared if a conflict indeed occurs and you won't act out of, let's call it reflexive stupidity. What I mean by reflexive stupidity, we're all guys, we're all alpha males, generally, in that self-defense world, whether we have guns or knives or we're fighting or training or whatever it is, we don't like people pushing us. We don't want names calling us, we know all this kind of stuff. Okay, so we react. Um, these days, it's highly politically volatile. We all know this. If this hat had MAGA on it and somebody came over and ripped it off of me, do I have a right to pound on them? Absolutely not. Okay, it, was that possibly an assault battery and other things? Yes. Some guys on YouTube, in fact, 99% of them, I watch YouTube videos all the time. Not necessarily because I'm learning from them, I watch them for the amusement. When they rip off your hat, smash them, crash them, bada bang, bada bang, whatever it is, Muay Thai, Kaki Thai, I, I don't care, whatever. Guys, let the hat go. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys something, okay? This is the best way in a physical competition, not in a, uh, a, a, a weapon competition. Put your hands up, left hand, if your right hand, left hand, right hand, my right hand from Earth, 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 so screwed up. Okay, we're going to use it anyway, okay? I worked what I got. Hands up, start backing up and moving. Keep moving. Don't let him get his right foot planted and keep talking to him. Use something called verbal judo. Hey, why do you want to fight? I don't know. You know, do I know you? Do we bowl together? I mean, what's do you even know? You have to think of a bowling ball. What's a bowling ball? It's got three holes in it. And get his mind off of violence. Okay, it works. Uh, you uh, uh, look it up on the internet. Learn some from verbal judo. Prepare for the moment of truth. You're you are highly likely. I'm going to keep saying highly likely to be able to walk, talk your way out of it. And the last thing I'm going to say, and we'll, we'll, uh, Jeff's going to throw some more stuff at me. Running is an option. However, and the guys who are aggressive, they're going to say, and I'm not saying they're wrong. I didn't say anyone's wrong. I, I did. I'm sorry. Okay. But I'm <laughs> saying in some, some, okay, some context, and at least in this context, in some other place, some points in the view. I can't run. My grandmother could outrun me. Okay, whatever. I, I can't run because I have a disorder, immune disorder. Okay, so um, I have no choice but to stand and deal with it. Doesn't mean I'm going to correctly strike. It just means I have to stand there and put my hands up. And what happens if he's going to punch? Okay, I'm going to cover. I can counter attack. Whatever. Okay. Um, a little different with guns, obviously. Okay, but you have to put your hands up and remember, don't stand in his face because if you're right here, okay, you can get cold cocked. Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee, whatever. Nobody can train the chin. When we get hit in the chin, we get knocked out because the brain, it's not connected to the um, skull. 
So it hits the skull and it, you, like an electric uh, short happens and you go out. Okay. So hands up, back up, um, talk your way out of it, run if you can. However, do bear in mind, if you're running, yes, he could shoot you, stab you, uh, collapse you. There is trouble there. I'm not saying don't be, uh, don't defend yourself. I'm saying we have to be prudent to the point where we're prepared for this moment. We are ready to act or not. And just like you guys who are practicing, if you're practicing well, like Jeff teaches, you know, pulling and firing, then you want to put two center, one in head, whatever, uh, if we're talking frankly, um, then it's the same thing. You can't think and do these things at the same time. I'm also a professional drummer. When I'm going, whatever, I can't think and do that at the same time. I can talk to you while I'm doing it. I mean, that's how crazy it is. My subconscious mind took over. If your subconscious mind is not in control, you're not in control. Yeah. We talk um, a, a lot about that gray zone in that moment of should I go or not. And the law doesn't necessarily says that you have to wait for the knife to be three inches into your into your gut it's it's an imminent threat of death the great volley of harm it yep. doesn't have to be an actual fight so when you're in that gray zone your narrative needs to be on point and you also need to have physical corroborating evidence of that gray zone and I don't think a lot of people truly understand just because it may be legal does not necessarily make it what you should do. But uh, again, it's an imminent threat of death or great bodily harm. It doesn't have to be an actual fight to defend yourself, but your narrative is going to have to be uh, pretty dang on. Yeah. And this is, um, oh, wait, I'm going to circle back to something Jeff said earlier. I forgot to mention. Okay. So, um, when we've done something, let's make this very clear. We are presumed guilty until proven innocent. That's the truth. Now, I know we're living in the United States, the free, the home, the liberty, Star Spangled Banner. Guys, things have changed. If you haven't noticed, we have, I'm not attacking anybody's politics, by the way. If you're a liberal, that's fine. I don't hate you, okay? This hatred of conservatives and liberals is really crazy to me, at least, okay, I'm not even hating you if you do that, okay, it's fine, <laughs> you know, whatever, if you want to do that, do that, okay, I don't hate liberals, I just prefer when they're not around, okay, so, that being said, um, Jeff had mentioned earlier, what do we do when we're presumed guilty until proven innocent, okay, so, new world, you're presumed guilty until proven innocent, and that's what's going to happen. The machine's going to grind you up like a meat grinder. You're going to become chopped meat. When the police arrive, this is the second most important thing. Okay, so first and foremost, you must plant this in your mind to the point where it becomes reflexive. Jeff and I may disagree a little bit right now, and that's fine. I love that we can have discourses and we can exchange opinions. That's great. I, I, my father said to me, uh, God rest his soul, if you want to know your own opinion, look in the mirror and talk to yourself all day. That's the truth. Okay, so I'm going to give my opinion legally. However, I'm going to say one more thing, then I'll say it. Okay, guys. Um, just because I'm the lawyer here and Jeff is not, does not mean Jeff does not have validity. It's just like when you go to a doctor, a doctor may say, I, wa I want to do ABC to you. You have the right to say, I disagree. You may go on the internet or elsewhere and research and maybe learn more about that than a doctor and know more. Is it possible you know more than your lawyer or your doctor? Or, yeah, absolutely. So uh, guys, don't assume because I'm a lawyer that I am some kind of, I don't know, you know, absolute source of truth i give you my legal opinion from my training my experience whatever and then you make your choices okay that's all it is all i can do for you okay so um when the police arrive this is uh, i am going to state it very strongly this is a, a, a very very strongly there is nothing good coming out of your mouth that's going to help you. I, know, I, I hope we're gonna extrapolate on this now. So Jeff, I'm gonna throw it at you and then uh, let me run with this please after you uh, throw it, say something about this place. Well, it's, it's true, I, it, I've always clarified this. I'm a graduate of Autodidact University as far as self-defense goes. 
I am a self-taught person who has been reading and studying this thing for about uh, nine years. There's, there's three words of thought, and I'll say this. Most criminal defense attorneys will say, shut up. They will. And it's, it, right. it's, it, they deal with criminals all the time. And the best a, a way of going through it is a criminal is not going to be adding to their position whatsoever. And I get it. And I truly believe, and, and let me qualify this a little bit, 97% of all self-defense cases that go through the system are bullcrap. Yep. It is a criminal trying to parsec his justification for a criminal act going wrong. All right. right. Now, most lawyers, most criminal defense lawyers, don't treat true, truly a good guy self defense claim. I want to talk about Masayub a little bit. And he is, most people will know who Masayub is. He's kind of like the godfather of, of self defense um, use of force. And what he has done is that he has the tell little effect. So you have the shut up, you have the tell little, and loggeria, where you can't. Yeah, go, go, that's stop. very good. Yeah, go with that a little bit, please. Yeah. <laughs> you can't stop shutting yeah. up. Yeah. I truly believe 98% of people on this planet shut up. Don't yes. say anything. If you are a criminal, if you are having a self defense case against a family member or a loved one or so on, you know. It's probably good that you shut up. Now, what Masayub does, all he does is deal with good guy self-defense claims, where the only reason why he comes involved is because there's not enough data points to make your narrative look good for you. So what he has come up with is just a, a few things. And, and actually, we're not very far apart right. with... Um, because one was in your book with the 911 call is right. um, that guy, for me, it's, I didn't, you know, getting away from legal phrases, I think is, is paramount because it may look bad. If right. you, uh, you know, I was afraid for my life for great ball and harm. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. that guy tried to kill me. <laughs> John is over there. The witnesses are there and then shut up. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let me go for, go for a little bit more. Yeah. Go now, on. when you are, when a criminal gets charged for armed robbery, he doesn't have a burden of production. A, I'm going to use a, a term in uh, an affirmative defense. Affirmative defense is morphed over the past 30 years where it's, that phrase is different from county to county and in, in state to state now. I don't use it anymore. But when you are making a self-defense claim, you have the burden of production, and then the state has the burden of persuasion. People, it's a self-defense claim is more than just shutting up sometimes. You have the burden of production. That means that you have to produce more than zero evidence that it was a self-defense claim. And Good sometimes point. you'll never get to that point. There's a case in... Um, in Texas, uh, and again, it was a uh, an appellate court decision, so there's a lot of warts on it. But the judge did not allow him to uh, for the jury to hear a self defense um, uh, uh, a self defense claim because right. there was zero evidence. And you know why? Because he was a criminal, and because he knows the system that all right. criminals should shut up and that's what he did right. the beautiful and I'll, and I'll end it with this if you say that guy tried to kill me the gun or the knife fell off the bridge and into the water is in the water those are the witnesses the beautiful thing about that is that statement in that very specific term is unimpeachable and it cannot be cross-examined and it almost automatically will give you that self-defense jury instruction that's why I'm, I am saying that if you are listening to this, you guys have been li listening to my channel a long time, I am willing to bet that half of you guys would probably be able to say the, the say little effect if, this is a big if, you know how adrenaline works in your body. Because the adrenaline pump, 
you may not be able to shut up if you do not Big know. point. Big point right there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That's, that's my thing. Again, me and him are not very different. He's the lawyer. I'm not. Shut up if you're a criminal. And this is another thing. I was listening to a self-defense uh, criminal attorney says, don't even go to the hospital. Okay. You're right. If you are on drugs or alcohol and you get in a self-defense event, yeah, you probably shouldn't go to the hospital. But you could possibly be, be missing exculpatory defensive wounds on yourself. George Zimmerman, if the police officer didn't have the wherewithal to take pictures off the, the, the back yeah. of his head yeah. with yeah. Trayvon Martin beating the, in the ground, uh, he may not cases, have a yeah. successful claim with that because yeah. uh, Trayvon Martin beating his, his head against planet Earth yeah. was the justification of deadly force. Yeah. Plain and simple. So that's where it gets it to. So you can say the nothing effect, but if you are in that little gray wiggle room where you have the burden of production or the facts aren't totally in your um, uh, provable, you may be in trouble. So saying nothing could hurt you. Could. Okay. Um, okay. Now, uh, Jeff is a friend, and I mean that, guys. You know, sometimes people say people are friends. We're friends. Uh, and, uh, I have respect for him. If I didn't have respect for Jeff, uh, I am not the kind of guy, um, if you guys watch me more and get to know me more through my books and, uh, whatever else is coming out, by the way, the gray zone is following this book. Okay. So it's going to be expand on us. Uh, you'll come to learn that I'm a sincere guy. Okay. So, uh, I didn't teach body, mind, spirit for 20 years because, uh, I did it mostly for free and I tried to help save and change lives. Okay. So, um, all right. So that being said. Uh, I'm going to somewhat disagree with Jeff, but remember, that's good because we're not looking in a mirror talking to ourselves all day. Okay, so it's good that we're having a change here. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, and if you look at Supreme Court decisions, they're always five to four anyway. But again, yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> you know, those are lawyers yeah. talking about themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Particularly with Roberts these days. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not trustworthy. Okay, so people, I'm going to read not the whole Fifth Amendment. Uh, I'm going to read the part that um is important for us okay so you should by the way when you get a chance read the amendments so the fifth amendment we're going to start with a comma nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself nor shall be deprived of life liberty or property okay da, da, da. However, i'm going to re reread the part that pertains i'm going to then rock and roll on it nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. All right, now, here's where I'm going to disagree with Jeff. There is never going to be a situation where you're going to talk yourself out of being arrested. Not going to happen. The police officers, I want to make something else clear. Police officers are heroes. Who else in the world runs towards violence? They will literally run into gunfire for a salary, that's all there is a salary, for you, and they will do that. And they're never going to say, oh, that sounds too difficult. There's, oh, there's 25 guys with AKs, whatever. Oh, we're afraid. We're not going to go. No, they're coming, okay? There's, I don't care if there's 5,000. If need be, they'll call the 82nd Airborne. That's, I don't even know the 82nd Airborne still working, working out. What you say, whatever. They're never going to stop. They're coming to help you. Uh, is that heroic? Yes, they're heroes. Okay, however, which is different than but, not saying but, it's a, but is a pivot. You know, I, you know what? I don't think you're a really bad guy, but here it comes. Yeah, okay. All right, so however, it, are there bad and good in the police system as there are in the lawyer system, as there are in the, uh, you know, our architectural system and the uh, engineer system, whatever, yes. Um, this is a particular job that um, gives extraordinary power. A badge and a gun, and essentially a license to kill. I didn't say kill willfully and wantonly and crazily, of course not. However, a license to kill, um, in, in, in a sense. So uh, I, I, I admire you officers. You're doing heroic jobs. However, it does it sometimes attract, I think, somewhat to a higher percentage of people who are, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, I'll yeah, use okay. it narcissists. Now, Narcissist. Okay. Yeah, they're a bit narcissist at times. Okay. And the system also, by the way, and I went to law school, 
they tried to indoctrinate me. I didn't join in the club. However, uh, there was an indoctrination system. Is there an indoctrination system with, with police officers? If you never notice, they tend to hang out together. They tend to start talking similarly, all this kind of stuff, okay? They I tend will, to start thinking, yep, please. I mean, uh, there is uh, a book out there where in the top 10 professions of narcissists hang out, politicians, judges, prosecutors, <laughs> police, and fire. Those five are boom. more narcissists yeah. than boom. anyone else. Boom, boom. Jeff just hit a home run. There you go. Okay, that was it right there. Okay. All right. So that being said, um, okay, so you're never going to talk yourself out of being not arrested. You're also only going to talk yourself into being arrested. Now, I'm going to touch upon some things that Jeff and I have spoken about in the past. And uh, so just you guys understand where we're coming from. He had a very good, good point. Let's say, for instance, a piece of evidence, it's snowing, a car comes along, and that evidence would have been exculpatory, and it's no longer there. Yes, uh, you can have a problem. I'm talking about odds. The odds are much better that you keep your mouth shut. Why? I'm going to go through a litany of reasons now. Jeff said something brilliant. It is brilliant. You just engage in violence, whether it's a fist fight, you went to the ground, or God forbid, knives and guns were involved, especially guns. You, are you, you think you're in the right frame of mind? Some of you guys are military guys, and by the way, thank you so much for your service. I'm sure that you went through this when you, if you did actually engage in shooting guns at other people. This is insane. You are, I'm sure the first time you did it, you were not in the right frame of mind, and military guys can tell us more than anybody. I'm sure if you're a police officer, you fired your gun. I know that you can confirm what I'm saying. Generally, us mortals, some of you, maybe you're somehow better equipped. I know that most of us mortals, if we get involved in violence, we're not in the right state of mind. So you're probably, and not definitely, probably, unless you're like Jeff, who is very well versed and he's been, if he's not been visualizing, he's been speaking this a lot, but speaking, you're visualizing. Okay, same thing. So he's well-versed in keeping control of what he says. It is highly likely that you're going to say something that's not going to help you. The only thing that's going to happen, here's the only thing possible, is that possibly, which is so unlikely, maybe some evidence was not pointed out, such as there was a screwdriver on the floor, the guy was gonna go for a screwdriver and I didn't point out the screwdriver and then they don't take a picture of the scene or whatever and then later on, the screwdriver is not allowed to be brought into evidence because the other side's fighting me and I can't get the screwdriver, screwdriver in evidence. Okay, I grant that. We're talking about gray zones here again, but this one's not as gray. I'm talking about your odds of survival in that meat grinder system are much higher if you choose to zip it up and allow the cavalry. You call me, you call John, you call Jane, whoever it may be, you let us come. And at that point, we have, that's what we're paid for. We have expertise in knowing what to say, what not to say. And when you speak, I'm going to counsel you. I'm actually going to write something up with you. I'm going to make sure that you read off of this. You don't go, you don't go off of this. That's it. You don't say anything else other than this. The prosecutors in particular, I want you to understand this. I want to say something very important. Out of the whole system, you know who the real bastards are? The prosecutors. These are not nice people. These are, I'm going to say, guys, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not sorry. No, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. These are bad people. Narcissists. Narcissists to, <laughs> what, what Jeff said was so, was so awesome. These are the, the key, the, the keystone for narcissists. You know, keystone is a little piece of like triangle. They hold up Roman you know, uh, arc, arches and all. It's amazing. The keystone narcissists. These people are up to no good, nothing. They're not your friends. And by the way, we're on that. The police, they're not bad people. They're doing their job. Their job is to collect evidence, to present a case to the prosecutor who absolutely wants to charge you. And by the way, if your gun was involved, do not think that the prosecutor is not going to, I know this is double negative, I'm going to say it anyway, not going to speak to the politician involved, assemblyman, some person, assembly woman, congressperson, congress, whatever. Uh, they're going to. And if that person's up for re-election, don't think for a second that politics don't get involved. Everybody, every listening say on radio station, WIFM, what's in it for me? Okay, that's it. So they're looking to nail you. The more you move your mouth, 
the more trouble you are probably in. So I'm not going to say Jeff is wrong. I'm going to say that we have a, a respectful difference of opinion. If it wasn't, I would stand my ground. There's, I'm not going to because there is, what he said, some area for, for a gray zone here. However, the gray zone early about preemptive strike is not the same thing. Yeah. Jeff, um, can you still see me? Yeah, I'm here. I uh, okay. wanted to switch okay, yeah. it. I wanted to switch off because, uh, I, I, again, this book is for the, the 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 guy who doesn't know the system very well. This is what I would call a thirty thousand uh, foot view, looking down at the the legal system. It is your uncle giving you sound advice throughout the years on uh, many uh, things with it. There is, um, I think, you know, for my viewers who are more into the the, uh, the handgun issue, this is still a good book, even though that it's more geared toward the MAA, because we talk about this a, a, a lot. You know, you have ordinary force, and then you have deadly force. Within ordinary force, there is a spectrum of forces. Obviously, a poke in the chest is much different than a a, a, a hand to the fist. So there's a spectrum of forces there. But when MAA fighters, what they do is they get into the deadly force aspect of it, and they don't know it. Deadly force is one bucket. Deadly force with a knife is the exact same thing as uh, an MAA uh, is the exact okay. same thing as an MAA fighter bending a joint okay. out of uh, out of place. That is great bodily harm. Where MAA Jeff, I, Jeff I, I never interrupt. I want to say something very fast because it's in my mind earlier when I say it. If you have a zombie gun, by the way, you guys, if you have a gun all tricked out, if I'm against you as an attorney, I'm going to wrap that gun around your neck, figuratively speaking, in court. If you have a knife, you have three, five knives on you, I'm going to wrap that around. I'm going to choke you to death in court if I'm against you and saying as, as your offensive attorney. So all you guys have tricked out guns, by all means do that. I'm just telling you. And by the way, everything you said in your forums is coming to evidence, you know, that uh, we should blah, 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 blah. Everything on your phone is coming in. So everything you've said is coming in. So just be aware that all this stuff that you're doing in your life, every piece of that, if I'm against you, I'm going to wrap it around your neck and I'm going to choke you to death. Please continue, John. Yeah, and it's the same. We've talked about this with the self-defense uh, guy down in uh, Rochester, Minnesota, where he went against a 17-year-old um, uh, a boy. And uh, he was, you know, he was wrong in, well, he was wrong. And he had a bumper sticker on his, uh, his bumper. It said, yeah. gun yeah. control means hitting your target. And it yep. was in the police report, people. Yep. What you have on your t-shirts, what you have on your car, the bumper sticker. Absolutely. Whatever Absolutely. it Absolutely. is, yeah. uh, it's going to go Absolutely. towards what your intent. What was That's your right. intent to have that? Do you want to get into a use of force event? for something really silly, like a silly sit to a um, uh, uh, T-shirt or a stupid thing on, on your bumper. It's, That's right. it's something that you need to get away from. But I, I strongly recommend uh, this, this, uh, this book as an overall uh, view of what the legal system can do, the advice of shutting up, the advice of, of uh, not getting into the fight whatsoever. Um, I think it's a very good uh, a book for uh, for that kind of a, a person who needs to get into it. Again, it's not bogged down by legal cases. It's not um, uh, statute-driven whatsoever. It, and, and it's fun, right? Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's off the cuff a lot, too. So it's, not, <laughs> it's just yeah. not some Harvard guy, you know, black and white, you shouldn't do that. You know, there's, there's some character in it. So if you read this, you're going to get to know him a little bit more and uh, his position also. And uh, I can't figure out how to get this stupid thing back off my screen, but uh, okay. but you you can you can see his website uh, kickassbadass.com. Um, there's a link there to go to Amazon. Buy his book for a ten dollar investment, people. It's kind of stupid not. You know, you're you're willing to spend six hundred and fifty dollars on your net on your twelfth gun. I I um I once interviewed a Navy SEAL, uh, no yeah. Green Beret, and what he told me was uh, was interesting. It was it was kind of like a a mind change for you. He goes, amateurs talk hardware, professionals talk software. Yeah, this book is software for your hardware. 
Yeah. Or in, in when I'm talking about it, put it. Yeah. When I'm talking about MAA, your hardware is your hands. All right. I think it's software for reasonableness. That's what uh, I, I like to get into. Uh, I like that word reasonableness. Yeah, we're looking for reasonableness. That's right. And yeah. um, yeah. if the first person who goes to Amazon and leaves a, um, a, a review of the book, I'm going to send them out a, a, a 2 ASDL hat. Um, I'm sorry I can't get back onto this. I can't figure this program out since it's the first time I've used it. But to uh, do that, and other people, I will send out a, a, a small gift at, uh, of a reasonable size. So I want to thank um, Lazaro Angeles Lanza, the MA lawyer. Angeles La Lanzara. I, you know, dealing with uh, you know, professionals, dealing with self trained people, sometimes it's not a benefit for them because sometimes I, I, I hope. Um, he sees where I'm coming from and, and how I learn stuff. And even though I disagree on the totality of one stance, doesn't negate me, doesn't negate what most criminal defense lawyers say is to shut up. But That's correct. Again, yeah. like uh, uh, lawyers and, and use of force instructors, that all they do is self-defense claim. They have a little bit of wiggle room, but they truly do understand that if you don't know what adrenaline does in your body, you probably should shut up. So yep, there we I go. Um, I, I have nothing to add. That was a perfect close. There we go. Boom. Well, well, my friend, it was uh, good good to know you through the last few months and through the book. And uh, I hope indeed. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Okay, really appreciate it, Olive Brady. Bye bye. Okay, stay safe and stay out of conflicts, please. Okay. <laughs> All right.